there is obviously a spiritual battle going on. The enemy is doing everything he can to neutralize every single one of us from our God-given purpose. Every one of us. Yeah. And he's going to do whatever he can to neutral. And he knows he's, he's wise in knowing exactly what it is that would take you down a spiral of discouragement. Welcome to the Darren Early Wine Podcast, where we awaken you to become who you were born to be. Here's your host, Darren Early Wine. What are two of the most fundamental elements to becoming who you were born to be? I'm going to tell you today on episode three of the Darren Early Wine Podcast. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us again. I am your host, Darren Early Wine, here to do my best every single week to awaken you to become who you were born to be. And uh, I do want to thank you so much for joining us on the podcast. And uh, thank you for those of, you that, those of you that are subscribing, liking, re- leaving reviews, uh, whether it be on Spotify or anywhere you get your audio podcast or right here on YouTube. Uh, Thank you so much. And would love to hear from you. If you can, uh, please shoot me an email just to darren at blackbirdmission.com or on any of the socials. Just search Darren Early Wine. Would love to hear from you out there as well. And uh, glad to have you guys back. Want to jump in with some accountability, okay? Uh, Accountability buddy time here is uh, last week we talked about that 54321 go strategy for overcoming the snooze monster. I told you I was going to figure out over the next seven days or this week, how many times I hit snooze, how many times I was able to successfully do the four, five, three, two, one. And I would say over the past, uh, I'm going to be honest with everybody. Okay. Now we had seven days, a couple of the days wasn't a problem. Had to get up, coach baseball, some things kind of excited about waking up. Wasn't an issue with the alarm. I would say of the past seven days, at least four of them I did actually do the five, four, three, two, one thing and get up. Thank you very much. The crowd goes wild. Thank you. I mean, I appreciate it. Thank you. You in the back. Yes, you, sir. Thank you. Uh, but I, I did. In fact, this morning, this morning I did it. I hit snooze once and uh, I, I was I was deep asleep and wanted to sleep because I got back in the gym. You know how the quarantine's been beating us up a little bit. Got back in the gym this week and, I, and I've got the day after the day lift pain. You know what that's about? Like you go lift. You go work out and you're the next first day after you're like, yeah, I'm good. Feels great. And then the day after the day you wake up and you, it feels like somebody beat you with a bat. That's what I'm feeling today. So I was asleep. It was, it was hurting. I needed to be asleep. Some more alarm goes off. I did hit it once. Boom. Hit it once. There was nine minutes. Then the second time I was like, you know what? I got to come on the podcast and be accountability buddy to everybody. So we got to do it. I did it. Five, four, three, two, one. Got up. And I tell you what, it, it was um, it was everything that, that we talked about last week. This morning, I got up. I was able uh, to take the time that I needed uh, in the word. I uh, had some time praying, had some time just to be quiet in the stillness and the solitude and silence of the morning. And uh, I can tell you my entire day, my entire, mor- my entire morning today has gone uh, exactly the way I wanted it to. I've had energy. I felt focused. Um, And I know it's because I got up and I reclaimed that 15 to 20 minutes that I would have lost if I'd have hit snooze. So stick with it. If maybe you didn't do so well this week, don't worry. Guess what? You got a chance tomorrow. You wake up tomorrow. It's a brand new day, new opportunity. So uh, the the principle I want to bring here for that is that community brings accountability. And that's what you guys have done for me. That's what I want to do for you as I, as each and every week, I want to awaken you to become who you were born to be in this community that's being developed around the Darren Early Wine podcast is we can help each other. Because if I was on my own, I don't know what I, that I would have gotten up today, but I knew I had to come face you guys and it, and it made a difference. And so uh, invite people into this journey uh, of becoming who God's created you to be because you need community to get there. And uh, that's, uh, that's the check-in there. And, uh, you know, I just want to take a quick drink here of uh, piping hot coffee from this amazing mug. I don't know if you... Uh, Oh, what is that? Oh, the crowd goes wild to get. It's a brand new coffee mug with the new logo. I don't know if you guys know what that logo is, but Dream Session, the Darren Early Wine Podcast. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. Listen, we just got these mugs because I love coffee uh, just about as much as life itself. And I wanted to have something to drink coffee here on the podcast that, that was cool, that has the curve. I love the curve. I don't know exactly what you call that. What's their name for that, guys? A lip, like a, that would be what it would be. Yeah, because I don't like when you drink and then it, you, you drip the coffee down. This is this is er, ergonomically, that's the word, ergonomically generated, constructed, designed 
to not spill the coffee. And here's what I want to do. I want to give you one of these. And here's what, here, maybe we, this is a deal. How about this? How about the first five people to leave a review on the podcast, whether, and I don't care where it's at, it can be on Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, whatever. First five people to leave a review, we're going to select one of you, and we're going to send you the brand new Darren Early Wine um, a coffee mug. Now, it does it keep things warm. It keeps coffee off of your, you know, shirt. And I mean, it's, it's, I, I think it looks great. So I want to send you one of these, uh, one of the first five people uh, to leave a review on the uh, the podcast. I would appreciate it. And so, hey, listen, I want to check in. We got a new segment I want to bring to you guys today called The Mailbag. We want to check in. We've got a great email this week from Laura over in Illinois. Uh, Laura from Illinois, thanks for listening uh, to the podcast. And as well, thanks for being an alumni of Spiritual DNA, the online course. And um, I'd love to hear from you. If you've got questions, maybe something that we talk about here in the podcast and, and it stirs a thought or a question from you, love to hear from you. You can email me directly at Darren, it's D-A-R-O-N, Darren at blackbirdmission.com, all one word. Would love to hear from you and uh, maybe hear what God's doing in your life, stuff you'd like to hear us talk about. Maybe people you would like to see interviewed here on the podcast. But Laura reaches out. She's a spiritual DNA alumni and uh, check this story out. You're gonna be so inspired by this. She reached out and she says, uh, I learned so much from taking spiritual DNA. And she said, here's my reason. She said, uh, my fivefold ministry uh, function, she says, I'm a shepherd. Uh, so she's a shepherd nurturer. She says, my strengths are achiever, input, harmony, responsibility, responsibility, and intellection. Her spiritual pathway is contemplative and caregiver. And her personality, she's an ENTJ. And uh, we also work with people that we do coaching with as a, in spiritual DNA to help you develop a strengths I am statement. And here is Laura's I am statement. I am a dependable, resourceful, thinking, task-oriented servant. An amazing spiritual DNA right there in Laura. And, and let me put the pieces together. This is so, so encouraging. Laura reaches out and she says, in my life, I've always been attracted to the poor and marginalized and downtrodden. But I ran away from this because I didn't want others to associate me with them. I took my identity from what others said about me, but no more, she says. She says, I've spent the past year absorbing so much of what Christ and the Holy Spirit has, has poured into me. And she's begun to uh, apply the truth of spiritual DNA to say, you know what, this is who God has created me to be. And I'm gonna lean into this way over anybody's opinion of me or what I'm involved in. And so she spent the past year doubling down on her work with the poor, working with the homeless shelter in her community. And she says, a few months ago, during the pandemic, some things began to shift and change and God began to speak to her. And in this process, she felt like maybe God was calling her to sell her house. Big step. So she prays about it and she decides that she's going to sell her house as she's trying to figure out how she steps into to maybe moving into the inner city neighborhood where she's been serving to not just go down there and serve, but actually become, uh, in, you know, incarnated in that in that uh, environment. So she sells her house. Check this out. This is amazing. And she has she's going to have nowhere to live. And she reaches out to her pastor and says, here's what I think God's calling me to do. I'm going to sell my house. I want to move down to the neighborhood. And he says, you're not going to believe it but we just purchased a house in the neighborhood and we're gonna to begin to use it as a home for, for women that are coming out of prison as for a place for them to re kind of transition back into society. And he says, here's the deal. We've been praying about it and we need a, a house mother to be there and to nurture and shepherd the people and the women coming out of prison. So, so check us out. What he's saying is we could just, let me go back to her DNA, right? We really need someone that might be an achiever, somebody that could be harmonious, have responsibility, someone who might have a spiritual pathway of being a caregiver, someone who might actually be a shepherd nurturer to step into the lives of these women and be dependable, resourceful, right? And a servant. That's perfectly who Laura is. So she says, you know what? I'm in, I'll do it. And they say, but here's the problem. We, we need about six months to build a relationship with the, with the prison so we can be a trusted partner. So now she sold her house and she has nowhere to live for six months. And maybe you've been here before where you trust God with something, you're like, get excited about it. And then something uh, unseen happens and you're like, God, what's the deal? Why are you letting me down? Like, I thought I was trying to serve you. And she gets in this moment and then she gets an email and she gets an email from Haiti. All right, so this, I love this. And I love that Laura shared this with us. And if you got a story like this, we would love to hear it because here's the deal. Laura is taking steps to become who she was born to be. 
And God is actually at work, not just in her neighborhood, but literally around the world, beginning to move pieces and opportunities for her to step into these moments. So she gets an email from Haiti and they say, listen, uh, we have an orphanage down here and we need a house mother to come down to Haiti and to serve in a, a, a short period of time where we're because we're without a house mother at the place. Guess how many months they need somebody for. You guessed it, six. Laura says she's blown away is that the perfect timing for her to say yes to this opportunity to go down to Haiti to become exactly who she was born to be. As you look at her spiritual DNA, there's literally probably no one on earth better equipped for this opportunity. Not only better equipped, but with a passion to serve those that are downtrodden, homeless, orphans. And God opens this opportunity for it. She's gonna go down to Haiti. And, and Laura, we're so proud of you. We're so happy for you. We're gonna pray for you. Please let us know how the, the, the mission goes. Please keep us updated uh, on the mission down there in Haiti. And then as you get back and move into this home here, and I, I just love it. And I love that, that, that for, for, as she ends the email, she says this, thank you for spiritual DNA. I'm not sure I would have had the courage to step into what God was doing without it. And here's what Spiritual DNA does for us. Spiritual DNA is an online course that I created. Uh, we also do live workshops with it. And we also offer coaching to help you understand your DNA. And what it does is it helps you. Uh, you go through five different assessments. There's online teaching that I, that I bring through the video course. And it helps you truly understand who God's created you to be and then equips you to be able to leverage that to experience the peace and the passion, the purpose that all of us want to experience in our, in our life, whether it be personally or professionally. It gives you a lens or, or you might even say a lane from which to walk and to live your life. And I love that for, for, for Laura is that for her, she understood the lane that she needed to be in. I am a nurturer. I'm an, I'm an activator, right? She's dependable. She understands these, these truths about her achiever, input, harmony, responsibility. She's a shepherd nurturer. She knows that God, she connects to God when she brings care to other people. She knows who she is. And so when opportunities come that fit her role and her calling, she has the courage to step into it. Biblically, here's the understanding that we have of why that works out is because Ephesians chapter two tells us this, that we, when we enter a relationship with God, we become the workmanship of God created in Christ Jesus to do good works. He's given us talents and calling. And then that passage ends and it says this, which God has prepared in advance for us to do. So get your mind around that. In this situation with Laura, that she is the workmanship of God, created in Christ Jesus to do good works. And God was working in advance, not just in her neighborhood, but halfway around the world in Haiti for good works for her to step into. And it's not that she's just one kind of special person on earth to do that. The same is true about you. And I hope that inspires you today. If you need to take that next step, I want to encourage you to head over to spiritualdna.me. You can start your journey on the online course and begin to understand your lens, your lane, your filter to move into your calling uh, because there are great works that are being prepared right now in advance for you to step into. So it's the mailbag. Thank you so much, Laura, for reaching out. And uh, I want to hit you. I told you there were two foundational truths to help you become who you were born to be. And here's what they are today. Here, here's the, here it is. It's talent and trials, talent and trials. And that's gonna shape the rest of our conversation today here on the podcast, because we're jumping into week two of our interview with Davy Blackburn. In fact, uh, if you've gotten this far into the podcast, stop right now and go back and listen to episode one with Davy Blackburn released last week. Uh, because before you jump into this portion of the podcast with this interview with Davy, you need to hear part one because he's gonna begin right now to talk a little bit about the talents and in, in, in what God has begun to birth in his life and begin to help him step into uh, that is helping change and bring healing and transformation to thousands of people. But you won't understand the power or the context of it if you don't listen to part one where he really unpacks the trial and what he had to walk through. And uh, I want you to go back. It's episode two of the podcast. If you haven't listened to it, push pause right now download episode two and watch that part of the interview with Davey Blackburn because it will begin to inform uh, and, and just give context to what you're going to listen to today. If you've already listened to episode two, then uh, get ready for what Davey shares in the second part of this interview because what he unpacks in this is that it's both part, that we have great talents, 
but, but for our talents to be fully realized and to be able to actually be maximized in our life for greatest fulfillment, they have to be paired up with trials. It's talent and trials. And it makes me think of a couple of passages I want to share before we jump into the, uh, to the second part of the interview. I've always loved this. It's in 2 Samuel chapter 22, and um, David's talking here. And listen to what he says here. He says, God made my life complete when I placed all the pieces before him. Unpack that for a second, right? Just stop real quick. All of the pieces. I don't know about you, but oftentimes I like to give God like the good stuff, right? Like, like God, what about these pieces? Can you do something great with this? But some of the trials, some of the pain, some of the struggles, it's like, well, let, let's, let me keep this, maybe hide this. Let me try to get past this. David comes out and he says, no, listen, here's what happened. God made my life complete. Complete. God made my life complete when I placed all the pieces before him. Listen to this. When I cleaned up my act, he gave me a fresh start. Indeed, I've kept alert. I've kept alert to God's ways. I haven't taken God for granted. Every day I review the ways he works. I try not to miss a trick. Now listen to this. Listen how the ends. And I want you to see how this passage is brought to life in, in what Davy shares in the last half of this interview. He says, I feel put back together and I'm watching my step. God rewrote the text of my life when I opened the book of my heart to his eyes. Let me reread that for you, right? Is God rewrote the text of my life when I opened the book of my heart to his eyes. I think all of us are, are, are somewhere in life where we've got a chapter of our life that we wish could be rewritten. There's a trial, there's a test, there's a struggle, there's a failure, there's something that we look back on and we say, man, if I could, if I could go back with, a, with like a, a secret eraser pen and just change that and skip that, I would. The reality is life is, is a one-way road, right? We don't get to go back. We can only keep moving forward. And so we have to put our minds and our hearts around the fact that, that it, we have to embrace those trials, those mistakes, those failures, and realize But when we open them up to God, right, that he can actually begin to rewrite the text of our life. And what you're going to hear David talk about here is, is having to embrace both the, te- the, the, the talents that God had given him, but also to embrace the trial. And the thing that I'm that I love about what, what David's gonna share is that, that he did truly grieve the pain of the trial that he was in, but then he trusted God not to waste it. And that's why he started the ministry that he's called, called Nothing is Wasted. And that's the truth about walking with God is that God does not waste your talents. We've talked about that already here on the podcast, right? That your talents and God's call in your life are irrevocable. He doesn't waste your talents, but he also doesn't waste the trials. It's both and every time. And um, David's going to share a quote. I want you to listen for it. I'm going to hit it with you right now, and then we're going to jump into the interview. He shares a quote from Elizabeth Elliot. And if you know the story of Elizabeth Elliot, uh, her husband was murdered. Uh, they were missionaries. It's, it's a phenomenal, uh, tragic, but, but heroic story. You can go look it up. And, and Davy shares a little bit about that here. You're going to hear it. But I want you to listen for this quote. And Davy shared this. It's towards the end of the interview where I asked Davy if he could if he could actually get in a time machine, would he go back? I said, Dave, I want you to think about getting 30 or 40 years down the road. And you've been able to impact the life of thousands of people. You've seen God do amazing things. If you could, and you could you know, push a button, would you go back and take this trial out of your life? And you're gonna be amazed at the answer that David gives. I want you to listen for it. But he shares this quote. He says this, it's from Elizabeth Elliot. As she was asked a similar question, And she said, what we gain in relationship with the giver far outweighs the loss of the gift. I would not have asked for this, but I also would not trade it for the world. That's a powerful perspective that can only be given by someone that has truly embraced talent and trials and seen God redeem them both. So let's jump right now to the interview, that the, the last half of the interview with David Blackburn. You're going to be encouraged. You're going to be inspired. And uh, when you finish, uh, we'll, we'll wrap it up right here on the Darren Rilla Wine podcast. You get through that. You're in Israel. Yeah. Things begin to be put back together. And, and we don't have time to go through the whole timeline. What I want to get to is, is, is 
the creation of nothing is wasted. Mm -hmm. God gave you that song in the hospital. Mm -hmm. He began to show you this journey. You, you, you went to war with the pain. He began to bring healing, the redemption story. What I love about your story is, you know, a couple months ago, we got a chance to go and minister to some prisoners here uh, at, at a jail in Hamilton County. And, and I got a chance to hear you, you teach for half a day with these, with these prisoners about and nothing being wasted. And, and dude, the, the thing I love about your story is, is God's presence is so palatable and real and powerful in the pain, but dude, the, the freaking redemption story yeah. is so yeah. rich. Like yeah. the whole, like you're saying, he's, he writes such an amazing story. He's such an amazing dad. He's such an amazing author. So talk a little bit about, about mm -hmm. nothing is wasted, the ministry, what you guys are doing, because right now you're, you're walking beside so many people in so many different varying places of pain. Right. Right. And helping them find purpose in it. Begin to unpack some of that, Dave. Yeah. Let me uh, kind of give a little bit more of a backstory um, as far as like thematically. So one of the things that Amanda had become, she was starting to become known for this, um, you know, in small pockets of Indianapolis was restoring furniture. Hmm. So she would take furniture that was, I mean, someone would throw off the side of the street or, you know, she'd call me and she's like, on your way home, can you pick up, there's like a chest of drawers that's sitting out, you know, on, on, uh, on Meridian. Can you go pick that up? And I'd go pick it up. I'm like, I bring it home and I'd say, Darren, I'd be, I'd look at her and I'd say, what in the world are you going to do yeah. with this piece of garbage? Yeah. Right. And I'll never forget the first time she looked at me with kind of some hurt in her eyes. And she said, she said, baby, just give me a little time and trust me. Hmm. And I'm going to turn this into something beautiful. And, um, and then after she passed away and I'm not sure exactly, you know, when it was, but it was very soon because I told the pastor that officiated her funeral about this and said, you've got to share this because this is what God is going to do. He's not going to waste this. Amanda's life was about restoring things that were the, the world had discarded as junk. And, and we've got to, we've got to share that this is what our Jesus is about. And most people look at this tragedy and they say, this is garbage. There's what in the world can anybody do with this? This is senseless. Mm. And yes, it is. When we look at it with earthly eyes, it is. Yeah. But when we begin to open up our eyes to the eternal things, then we can start to see that God's going to take this. And if we trust him, he's going he's gonna, to um, he, make it into something beautiful. And so that began this idea, this theme, nothing is wasted, nothing is wasted. Well, it was just kind of a mantra for a long time. And uh, then over the course of the first year, and I would say that, Darren, for me, it was about uh, an entire year of walking through healing and just letting Jesus lead me by the hand. I literally told him yes. I said yes to everything. I said, God, I, don't, I can't heal myself. There's no roadmap for this. There's no formula for this, no manual. You got to do it. So I'm just saying yes. And man, he led me on just some incredible, incredible healing journeys through all of that. Um, but then about a year, after, uh, I felt like I was like, okay, I want to, I want to turn this around into something purposeful. I want to say yes to whatever God is doing in all of this. And the other thing is I've kind of, I felt misunderstood to be honest with you. Um, we're Enneagram folks. And so I'm an Enneagram three. I feel like Enneagram threes are very misunderstood all the time. Um, you know, cause we've got ambition and we're, we're trying to, you know, we're trying to do something, but really it's about impact and making a difference if it's in a really pure hearted sense. And for me, it was like, I don't want to waste my life because this, this thing, this lot that the Lord gave me, like if, if, if I'm going to accept it, that means I need to steward it. And I am not going to let a single day go by where this is wasted. Cause this is horrific pain. I do yeah. not want this to be wasted. And so, um, the, the, there were some outliers in the outside world that, it, that just, it didn't make sense to. And so there were, there were a lot of questions being asked and even some like conspiracy theories being brought up that I was somehow involved in Amanda's murder and stuff like that. And so I would catch some of these things. I'm just like, man, I feel like I'm misunderstood. And people were, were even the purest of hearted folks were asking like, how in the world is this guy like getting up and pastoring this church after he experienced this. And what they didn't understand is the journey that God had brought me on and the people that he had surrounded me with. Mm -hmm. And so I said, you know what, what if I were to grab some of these people that God brought into my life and I were to have conversations with them? Cause I'm over here having conversations with them and you're asking how in the world is this guy still standing? You don't understand. Come here, come here, come here. Let's, let's bridge this. And so podcasting was this like thing that was kind of, you know, up and coming, we said, well, let's, 
what if we just started a little podcast and I just interviewed people who had gone through pain and suffering and they could just continue to say the same things over and over that I was saying. And we just mm. see all these stories that God was doing great things with. And David, so do you think it would be, would people, do you think people would have been happier if you had just completely fallen apart? Isn't that interesting Yeah, that it's like, why is this guy, why is he okay? Yeah. Why is he trying to bring hope to other people? Shouldn't he like, what's, the, what's the, the benefit of there? It's almost, that's right. almost like, and I'm, I'm guessing, and I could be wrong. I'm guessing some of the people that were, were naysayers or, or were coming against you may have been people of faith. Yeah. Yeah. At least claim to be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's like, Oh, what, what is this? Was this guy, did he experience some kind of healing miracle? Like, shouldn't he be bitter? And like, I guess, you know, what, what would have made them happy? It's really difficult, Darren. Like, I mean, I'll be honest with you, even last night and you know, we can talk more about this later, but like last night I kind of went on this rabbit trail and I was, I, I like went and looked at, I shouldn't do this. I should never do this. Went and looked at some conspiracy theory page that they have about us and stuff. And I went down that rabbit trail and it kind of took me to a, a low place last night where I'm like, man, why? Like, we're trying to do good. Why do people shoot you when you're trying to do good? And what I've had to realize, and it's hard to embrace the truth of this, but there is obviously a spiritual battle going on. Mm. The enemy is doing everything he can to neutralize every single one of us from our God-given purpose. Every one of us. Yeah. And he's going to do whatever he can to neutral. And he knows, he's, he's wise in knowing exactly what it is that would take you down a spiral of discouragement. Mm. And this is for everybody who's listening. For me, people, I'm a, I'm a, I, I want to be liked. That's my like carnal nature. I want to be seen as a role model. I want to be seen as somebody who is. And so anytime I hear something negative about that, it kind of can take me down this spiral of discouragement. And um, the enemy knows the right times to do that. And so I've had to like begin to guard myself with truth. And the truth is this. Anybody who is propagating any kind of negativity or cynicism or bitterness or it's only because they've got some kind of bitterness inside of their own story that mm-hmm. they've not resolved, mm. that they've not gotten healing from. And so they just project that. And so when I, when I think, I mean, you know, my wife now, she says, consider the source, Davey, just consider the source. And Jesus was misunderstood all the time. So if we're going to walk with Jesus, if we're going to become more like him, chances yeah. are we're going to become misunderstood because yeah. the things of his kingdom don't make sense. We try to bring, you know, the tough cookies and put them on the bottom shelf. You and I do as teachers, we try to make sense of it, but there is something about the kingdom of God that just doesn't make sense unless the Holy Spirit breathes that understanding into you. And this upside down kingdom is like, oh, oh, so now I I walk in forgiveness and I walk in, you know, in patience. I walk in kindness. I walk in, I, I don't, I don't like return evil with evil. Like that's not, you know, and so I don't even remember where we're going with that, but that's the you know, that's what I've had to like, kind of just adopt as a truth and say, you know, I like, I'm going to push aside the naysayers and, and just continue to focus on what God's called me to do as an audience of one. And so part of this was like, Hey, what, what can we do to help people get some understanding and encourage people? Stories encourage people. Yeah. You know, for me, one of the most encouraging stories that helped me walk through this was Elizabeth Elliot's story. If your listeners have never heard of Elizabeth, Jim and Elizabeth Elliot, go Google their story run down that rabbit trail because it's incredible. And it just really encouraged me. And so I'm like, what if we just share stories? So we started the podcast, started sharing a bunch of stories. And I was doing that parallel and simultaneous to pastoring the church. Um, there's so many things, we can't get into the whole, you know, what kind of what happened to the church and why we stepped away. Uh, one of the reasons was because we realized the demand of pastoring a local church and doing this other calling that God had for us. Um, there was no way we were going to be able to do both of them. Yeah. That was one of the reasons. And so, you know, about a year into, uh, let me make sure I get the time frame right. So we started the Nothing Is Wasted podcast in June of three years ago, 2017. And it was about the end of 2018, August or so, that we began wrestling with stepping away from the church and stepping into Nothing Is Wasted full time. I had been in that time being asked to come and speak at different places and share the story. And there was always a profound impact when I did. And um, we did not know like how in the world, what does it mean to step away from a church, pastoring a church to go into pursuing a podcast? Like, Mm. 
it doesn't seem like what it, what's substantial enough about a podcast to make this a full-time thing. Well, God was preparing us that this podcast was going to turn into a full-fledged ministry. Yeah. So in 2019, as I began just going and speaking at different churches and we were doing the podcast and we were kind of starting to do some coaching with people and trying to walk them along uh, a path that we had developed for them on, on how to walk through their valley. The thing we kept hearing over and over when I'd speak at a church was that was so inspiring. Wow. What do we do now? Mm. And so nothing is wasted ministries became the answer to that question. Yeah. Yeah. We went into the lab and we said, what do we do to help people with the, wow, that was inspiring. What do we do now? Let's move from the podcast is very inspirational. Let's move from just inspiration to transformation. Yeah. So I heard Dave Ramsey say this one time and I stole it. And I was like, that's good. We're going to build our entire ministry around this concept. And it was that at the convergence of three circles is transformation, Hmm. content, community, and coaching. Hmm. That in the middle of those three circles, you will find transformation. And you can look at it in a lot of different sectors of life, physical fitness, right? If you put a program in front of somebody, you give them other people to help spur them along and stir them up in that. And you put a coach there with them, they're going to see transformation. Hmm. You see it in our faith, right? Content community coaching, they're going to see transformation. And so we just decided, okay, how do we build out content community and coaching with nothing is wasted to help people navigate their valleys and find purpose in their pain, to walk in the redemptive story that God is already writing. How do we help to reveal that to them? So we do a lot of things with content, podcasts, you know, um, we have an ebook where I'm releasing a book in September. We're about to start a syndicated blog where we're going to have other blog contributors. So we just have continu- continual drips of content going on. I'd love to get into filmmaking one day where we're taking some of these stories on the podcast and doing full fledged documentaries. Like I love that kind of stuff. It just is inspiring. And it's just like, I love a good cry. You know what I mean? Like I'm a three wing four. So I love to like sit and watch this film and just get moved by it. And it's just so cathartic, but you know, so we've got a lot of dreams with the content, but community and coaching were the things where it's like, that's gotta be the, the teeth to this. So how do we do this? So a while ago we had an idea. What if we could connect people in community to their, to other people with that are walking through their specific trial or Valley? Like what if we could talk to a girl who just wrote in and was sharing their story, her story about experiencing and surviving sexual abuse. Mm. What if we could connect her with other people who are in that same Valley? Because the podcast, because we were sharing all these varieties of stories, it wasn't just about loss or spouse loss. It was about all kinds of pain and suffering and trying to see the common denominators and the common threads that God has for us in pain and suffering. Because of that, the audience had grown to so many different types and they're asking us as if we're the experts on pain and suffering. I'm going, I've not been there. I don't know. Right. Right. I know my story. I know what God showed me, but, and so, um, man, we just started dr- dreaming this, brainstorming it. We weren't planning on launching this kind of platform to connect people in groups and stuff until toward the end of this year. But then COVID happened and we said, man, people are more lonely now than mm-hmm. they've ever been. And they're also probably, if they're walking in, tr- in trauma right now, they're more despondent. Yeah. They need yeah. people around them more than ever. So we decided to just launch it. We've launched it. We're working through it. We've got guides that kind of lead and pioneer each one of those. And those are people who have walked through that specific Valley and are on the kind of the other side of it. And they're just saying like, they're just facilitating conversations like small group leaders and doing Zoom calls once a month or something like that or whatever their frequency is. And we've got groups for just about any kind of situation that you can think of. Um, and then we're, you know, we're, we're uh, overhauling our coaching right now. And so Christy and I have been doing coaching. We've been taking people along what we call the pain to purpose path, uh, which is 10 waypoints in an introductory video. And it's just 11 videos of uh, a course that helps people go from basically A to Z through their valley. And it and it's curated uh, from all the things I felt like God kind of showed me as we were healing through the valley, the process he took me through and uh, overlaying that with the process I kept hearing all these other people I, were, I was interviewing mm-hmm. with. I said, well, okay, there's some common threads here. So let's put that into a path for people so we can give people what I didn't have. 
Yeah. And that became the, the pain to purpose course. Uh, and so, you know, right now it's just been Christy and I coaching people through that. People can just purchase the course or they can purchase coaching packages where we help walk them through the course and do kind of one-on-one sessions. But um, beginning January, 2021, the plan is, is to have uh, several, maybe a dozen to start out with certified guides that can also do the coaching. Love it. And that can help people walk people through this path so that we can, impact more and more people than just what our bandwidth, bandwidth is able to do. You know, David, the thing is like the common denominator of all of life is pain. You know, mm-hmm. we, it, we have, it. we live in a fallen world and it's like, it's, I mean, you turn the news on, it's like, you can only, you can't, it's like you get overwhelmed by the amount of pain that is out there. And I think that's one of the beautiful things that God invites us into if we'll allow him to, to redeem our pain is that we get a chance to be a guide to let people know, like we yep. come back to that same passage of, of, you know, of, of Psalm 23, but it's like, listen, we're all going to walk through a certain valley of uh, the shadow yeah. of death. Like, but there is a shepherd and, and he leads us through this and he leads yeah. us to still waters and he leads us to pasture. He leads us to where there's provision. He leads us to where there's freedom, where there's satisfaction. And like, yeah. and even the presence of our enemies, you know, yep. he's going to anoint our head with oil. Yeah. And I love it. Dave. Here's, here's my last question. And, and this is, this came into my head and if, and we'll, we'll edit it if we don't like it, this is a dangerous question. I kind of feel, I've kind of feel this, I feel risky asking you this question. All right. Let's fast forward. Um, let's fast forward 30 years from now. Mm. So you're what? 65, something like that. How old are you? So you're 65 and you have grown. Nothing is wasted. You have God has restored your family. He's given you a, a new child, new wife. You're, you're, you're growing this family. Who knows by that time you got grandkids and, and you've helped tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people find the, the, the healing and the peace of God yeah. in their Valley of pain. Mm. Um, if God gave you the chance to skip this tragedy and this pain, would you take it? Hmm. That is a tough question. So early on, I read a book by Elizabeth Elliot and um, she said this in this book, she said, what we gain in relationship with the giver far outweighs the loss of the gift. Hmm. And then she, she followed that up by saying, I would not have asked for this in my life, but I also wouldn't trade it for the world. Hmm. And what's really tough, Darren, is that everybody wants things to be formulaic, black and white, either or that they, they want to, they want to be able to say that if you say, wow, my life is blessed right now, that you have also now um, diminished or dismissed both the tragedy that kind of altered your life and the life that you had before. And that's just not true because we don't live in either or mm. we live in the tension of both and mm. um, I posted something the other day about how Christy and I, Christy's my new wife now for your listeners. And I didn't even share like the redemptive part of like how we met and all that as you were, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll do another episode later. We'll and we'll get later, that. But I posted something about um, how we kind of, she and I kind of muse about, you know, as we're kind of learning each other more, we muse about our, our childhood and growing up and the first 35 years of our life that we weren't privy to with each other. And we, we sometimes go, man, it would have been really cool to know each other. Like I would have loved to see you in that context. I would have loved to have seen you <clears throat> knowing that for me, if I had known her or experienced her in the way that I'm experiencing her now, that means that I wouldn't have Amanda. And there is a reality where you can, in God's reality, where you can both say, man, I love this girl that I'm married to right now. And I, 
I lament the fact that I didn't get to experience, you know, your first 32 years. And at the same time, I am and was madly in love with the wife that I lost. And I wouldn't trade the 10 years that I, w- that I had with her. Mm. People don't like to sit in that tension. And what tragedy has taught me is that it's okay to sit in that tension. And so I, I, I use that as a preface to say, at first, when I read that quote from Elizabeth Elliot, I was like, I, th- how? Like, I can't go, I can't get my heart there. But now as I'm beginning to see the unfolding, and I'm praying we're just seeing the beginning of the unfolding of God's redemption, redemption story. But as I'm beginning to see it, I'm going, I see what she means. Mm. Because I would have never asked for this. And yet in a very strange way, I also wouldn't trade it. So good. So good, Davey. And that's, that is a statement that can only be said through someone who's walked through the valley to say it, to say it as a, as a quote or as a bumper sticker type of inspiration from someone who has not walked through it. it it's, it's, a, it's a trinket truth, right? Yeah. But for you to say it, it's, I mean, it's pure gold refined. Yeah. And that's uh, so beautiful, man. It's, um, man. Darren, can I share this real quick before you're, cause I, I, at the beginning, you started this conversation out with like, what is it, what happens when God, this kind of your purpose gets interrupted, you're running full tilt in it. And what I've discovered that if, and I would encourage your listeners to go read the making of a leader hmm. by J Robert Clinton. But what he talks about is he does a, like a, basically a field study on all these great Christian leaders and biblical leaders. And what he noticed is there's some common denominators in all of them as they step into the, what he calls convergence and convergence is this stage where everything that God has prepared you for kind of comes to a head and you're walking in your sweet spot. You're walking in your purpose. And so he stages it out. I think convergence is stage five, but stage stage two and three are like this, um, like preparation, like where you're learning tools and and skills and talents. And you're kind of discovering th- those things about yourself through, you know, trial, uh, trial and error, not like trials and suffering, but trial and error. You know, you get a job and you're kind of working your way and trying to figure this whole thing out. Or you start out in ministry, you're working your way, trying to figure out what you're good at, what you're skilled at. That's like stages two and three, your character is getting developed, all that sort of deal. But then there's stage four and stage four is usually some kind of unexpected crisis. And to the degree that you're able to walk through stage four is the degree that you're able to step into convergence because God will take your talents and your trials and he'll combine those things in stage four to show you an ultimate altruistic mission and purpose that he has given you. Mm. And I used to think that God would just use my talent. And that was the story that it was going to write. It's like, man, that guy is so talented and look how, wow. But God doesn't like to use our talent because then we get the credit. Mm. He'll use our talent. He put it in us. He gave Moses a staff, you know, I mean, he's going to, he, he's given you things that you can, but he's also going to refine you through the fire so that you recognize it. All this is, is for not if it wasn't for Jesus. So I just felt like your listeners needed to hear that because that's helped me so much. Yeah. So good, Davey. So good. Yeah. I, I don't, I can't even try to put up cherry on top. We're just going to let, we're just going to let you have the last word. David, they, people, they want to get connected to you. They, they, they need to, they're walking through something. Uh, best way to, to stay in touch with you. Uh, what, what should they do? Yeah. Um, we're on Instagram. Uh, both nothing is wasted ministries. That's the handle for nothing is wasted. Nothing is wasted ministries. Davy Blackburn um, is my handle, D-A-V-E-Y uh, Blackburn. And then DavyBlackburn.com and NothingIsWasted.com. Okay. Best place to track those. If you want to follow my wife, she is Christy. Oh, I don't remember her Instagram handle. Christy, that's a great question. You'll have to put it in the show notes or something like <laughs> yeah, that. We will. We'll put it in the show notes. <laughs> Christy.Blackburn.N-I-W. <laughs> I think I just started following her a couple of weeks ago. I do remember there were some dots and N's and W's in yeah, there. That's why it gets confusing. 
yeah, I wasn't going to try to guess. <laughs> David, dude, thanks so much. We'll have you back. You know, uh, Lord willing that you, your book launches in September of this yeah, year. We'll so. have, to, have to have you back and talk about the book and, and as the coaching uh, launches. And then uh, I want to talk to you. We're going to do a conference with Spiritual DNA in January. And so I want yes. to, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Yeah. Dude, cool. thanks for the time. I appreciate it, man. Thank you, man. Ooh. I had to bring us back with the dream chimes because that's, I mean, that was so heavy, but good to just come back to the, to me, we can't have a non-transition transition. You needed that. I I know emotionally I did too. Goodness gracious. How good was everything that Davey just said? There were so many points in the interview. I mean, if you're watching it, if you're listening to it, maybe you couldn't tell, but if you're watching it, I had to just sit back in my chair and soak in what he was saying. It comes with such authority and it comes, um, this was such power and, and, and it's so easy to apply uh, to our lives. I know that we, uh, ho- hopefully, you haven't had to go through the trial uh, that Davey has. And I hope that, that no one has to. That is uh, unthinkable. But I know you have trials and pains that feel just as heavy in your life as those do to Davy, And you know, here's the thing is, is as Davy talks about that idea we've been talking about today, that, that you, you, you have your talents, but you have to have your trials it is maybe if, if your life is just lived for yourself, maybe you don't have to learn from your trials. I don't know. Thinking about this week, I, I guess if your life is just about you, maybe you could just run from all the trials, run from all the pain and, and focus everything in your life on your talents. And, you know, probably, um, I'm guessing, if you just did that, you probably could build a life of great achievement. You could do a lot. You could accomplish a lot, especially if you're very talented. And you could build a life that basically was about whatever you could achieve for you. But here's what I want you to know, is at the end of that road is emptiness. Because you were not created. We're talking about how, trying to awaken you to become who you were created to be. L- listen to me now. You were not created for achievement alone. I like to accomplish things. I like to be busy. I like to do stuff. And God has created us to be fruitful. He has created us to, to work. Right off the beginning, right, Adam, he creates Adam and Eve, and he says, be fruitful and multiply, right? Like, we are given to work and to achieve, but that is not our sole purpose, if you think about any great accomplishment or, or your best moments in life is they weren't things that you did for yourself and by yourself as, as, as great as it could be to actually to, to accomplish something. But if you really think about the things that have moved and filled your soul, that have moved and filled your heart, they're things that are done with and for others. And the reason that's the case is because you were created in the image of God. You're unique over trees and over dogs and any animal on earth is God created human beings in the image of God, meaning that he created them to have the capacity to love and to be loved. He created them with the capacity to create. He created them with the capacity to serve. And so the reason that your life needs to embrace both the talents and the trials is because your life is not just about you. And it's as you begin to learn through the trials where God can be faithful and what he can begin to redeem, that you are now equipped to come beside others in their trials and bring them hope. And when you employ your greatest talents in the cause of bringing hope and love to others, you will find your soul and your heart overflowing because those are the two parts of what you've been created for, achievement and relationship. And that's why I love what Davey's created with the Nothing is Wasted uh, podcast and his ministry, the course he has, the Purpose to Pain, uh, Pain to Purpose course. I'd, I'd encourage you to go check that out. Uh, if you have pain in your life that you've not uh, that you've not walked through, that you've not seen God redeem. Uh, but I just love it because Davey didn't have to do what he's done. But as he talked about in there, running towards the roar, moving into the pain and allowing God to redeem it. And now as he actually comes beside thousands of people, he's able to offer them the same kind of compassion, the same kind of healing that he's received in the process himself. You know, and it makes me think about this, and, and, and um, I want to close with, with this thought, is when we see our talents refined by trials, you know what we get? We get passion. 
when talents are refined by trials, we get passion. And when I think of passion, I, I think about the number one definition in, in the dictionary for the word passion. You know what it is? The number one definition for passion is the sufferings of Jesus. You see, when the world has to find a definition to say, what does passion look like? They have to go to Jesus and his suffering from being betrayed and being being wrongly accused and beaten and then crucified, that the, the essence, the very essence of passion is what we saw in Jesus. He took his greatest talents, he took his greatest talents and he allowed them to be refined by that trial. And through that, the world saw what passion was and he fulfilled the purpose of which he was on earth. Think about this for a second. Is there anybody more talented than Jesus? No, right? He's God himself. Like, Jesus is the most talented person on earth. I mean, I don't know what, what I would have loved, and this never happened, but, but I, I wish basketball was around at biblical times because I guarantee you Jesus could dunk. I mean, let's just be honest about it. He's Jesus. I don't care if he was like five, six. He could for sure jump out of the gym. There's no doubt about it, right? Applause. Yes, we had to bring some more. Sorry, I had needed to use the buttons again. Jesus could dunk for sure he could, theologically. That's a, that's a stone cold lock. It's not, but I'm going to say it. I'm saying if if the tr track and field was probably around, I don't know when the, when did the Olympics start? Anybody know ancient Greece? Maybe back in then they probably were Olympics. I don't. Know. Yes, because there's actually a biblical thing where Paul talks about the victor gets the prize, and so yeah, the Olympics were around, right? Jesus probably ran. A, he probably ran at least a four four forty. Let's be honest. I mean, he's the most talented person that ever lived. Actually, I don't know if Jesus had sports talents, but I wish he did. Maybe he did. Here's what I'm saying. Jesus was God himself in the flesh. He had unbelievable talents, but check this out. If Jesus had just lived with his talents, you know what he never would have done? Fulfilled the purpose for which he came to earth. Jesus is the definition for passion because he embraced the trials of life and allowed the Father to redeem them. If Jesus had just been about his talent, the world wouldn't be saved. You wouldn't have the opportunity to have a relationship with him where he is able to come next to you and heal and redeem and transform the trials and the pain that you go through so you can find fulfillment in life as you help others in their pain. You see, Jesus himself had to embrace the talent and the trial so that he could live with passion and fulfill the reason that he was on earth. And the same is true for you. He is the ultimate example and inspiration for every one of us as we're trying to live this life of peace and patience, and kindness, purpose. And I hope that inspires you today. I know you have pain, we all do. And uh, if you haven't had a major trial, I'm not trying to be a, a boohoo, uh, you know, negative person, but uh, they're coming. You can't escape this life without pain, but the good news is that we serve a God who is a God that can take, he gave you great talents and he can walk you through the trials of life and allow them to be redeemed so that nothing, literally nothing is wasted in your life. I hope that encourages you this week. I know it did me as we were putting this uh, episode together and here's what I'd love to do. I'd love to connect with you in community and uh, here's the deal. You can't get through life on your own. You're not supposed to. And we want to form a community here as a part of the Darren Early Wine podcast. And maybe you're going through a trial right now. Maybe something's going on in your life and you're like, man, I need some help. Maybe you reach out to Davies Ministry. Nothing is wasted. Uh, go through his course. Or you can be a part of what's going on in the Darren Early Wine podcast and this community that we're developing. Uh, join us on Facebook, uh, Instagram, uh, or maybe even jump on here and begin to review and comment the podcast. Let's stay connected because uh, you weren't created to walk alone. You got great talents. God gave them to you. You're the workmanship of Christ Jesus created in him to do good works, which he's prepared in advance for you to do. And uh, let's walk through these trials together and live a life of passion. Once again, go review the podcast. One of the first uh, five people will send you one of these cool new Darren Early Wine mugs. And uh, have an amazing week. Until we talk to you next week, don't forget these three things. God is near you, not far away from you. God is for you, not against you. And God has created you on purpose and for purpose. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Darren Early Wine Podcast.